Hi guys, welcome to the next video on the chapter Nationalism in India. In the previous video we discussed about the civil disobedience movement. In this video we will be discussing about the sense of collective belonging. Now, uh, nationalism spread uh, across the world and in India specifically when there was a sense of unity among them. So, in India specifically, the unity uh, part was created by the presence of colonialism. So, like uh, when the people were fighting among themselves, just take an example that two people are fighting and they are against each other. When the third person comes and beats both of them, then the both start to sympathize between with each other and eventually they start uniting. So this is what happened in India as well. The different cultural groups, political groups, religious groups are fighting among themselves. And when the Britishers colonized India, uh, the, the, these groups realized that they had a lot in common. So this gave them a sense of belonging. So through the experience of united struggles, they uh, had a sense of collective belonging. Then not just that, it was also that a uh, lot of nationalists created a lot of folklore, songs, fiction. They also played an important role. And reinterpretation of the Indian history, that also was really important. Then press also played a huge role in the uh, collective belonging, making sure that the people were on the same page. So this was the uh, opinion through which we had a collective belonging. Now discussing about the symbol, various symbols, the most important symbol that actually united India was the figure of Bharat Mata. So it was originally uh, decided, uh, it was originally created by Bankim Chandra Chattopadhyay who actually eventually wrote Vande Matram as well. So, uh, this figure actually uh, was created by Bankim Chandra Chattopadhyay but this painting, this famous painting was by Abhindranath Tagore. In fact, not just this, there were so many iterations of Bharat Mata figures all across the country that it eventually became a symbol of nationalism. So, this was about the uh, uh, image of Bharat Mata and devotion to her. So, the nation uh, needs you was the actual devotion for Bharat Mata. Now, not just this, we had a lot of uh, folklore which was uh, revived. So, the nationalists went around uh, tours for various to various villages where they gathered the folk song to the various villages. So, they told the legends, they showed the true picture of traditional Indian culture. So, this is what the uh, nationalists were going around doing as well. So, this also created a sense of unity among the villages, unity among the various communities. Now, in Bengal, Rabindranath Tagore collected ballads, nursery rhymes and myths. So, he, and in fact, not just him, if you take the example of Madras, Nadesa Sastri published a four volume collection of Tamil folk tales which was called the folklore of southern India. So such books eventually uh, created a situation where uh, a lot of uh, or restructuring of the history was created where our glorious past was shown to the people because what the Britishers had actually done is that uh, the Britishers had said that Indians were uh, not good with uh, governing themselves. So this was about the various folklores. Then there was another symbol with the flag. So uh, it eventually, it actually it started in the Swadeshi movement back in 19, early 1900s in Bengal when a tricolored flag was designed in red, green and yellow. And since the Britishers had eight provinces in India, so this had eight lotuses for the eight different British provinces. The crescent moon on top of that was for the Hindu Muslim unity. So this was the original flag designed by the uh, designed during the Swadeshi movement in Bengal. Then Gandhiji himself designed another flag with the Swaraj. So he also chose a tricolor red, green, white and it had a spinning wheel in the center. So this was the flag and 
so it became a symbol of protest it became a symbol of unity so carrying the flag during the marches became a symbol of defiance as well so the flag was also a symbol of unity among the people then not just this as we discussed uh, the nationalists started reinterpreting the history because the Britishers had said that the Indians were a backward and primitive culture and they were not capable of governing themselves. So uh, when the nationalists actually told the true story of our glorious past, so they showed the history. So they showed the various glorious developments in the ancient part when art and architecture, science and mathematics, law, philosophy, all these were flourishing in India and it only started declining when they, India was colonized first by the uh, various Muslim empire and then by the Britishers so this is what was happening in India so they showed the actual picture so this led to a lot of collective belonging among them so they actually urged the people to take pride in India's achievement So this brings us to the end of the chapter on nationalism in India. Thank you so much.